everyone again. Today I'm going to share about my very strange obsession with underwater archaeology, which pretty much means anything interesting that you can find underwater. So many people ask, why? There's thunder. A lot of people ask why I care so much about underwater archaeology, and to me the answer is pretty simple. If you have an interest in human history, whether the ancient civilizations we know of, or even the ones that we don't know of, chances are quite high that you're going to be able to find something about them under the water. So, to explain this theory, there are two main parts. The first part is a very, very brief history of the human race. The first humans evolved roughly 3 million years ago and the first Homo sapiens evolved, which is our species of modern human, evolved roughly 200,000 years ago, according to what we know. According to what we learned in school, humans pretty much did nothing for about 180,000 years approximately, except, you know, live in caves, play with some stones, draw some cave art. So going from just settling down and just learning to domesticate animals and in just 10,000 years we went from that to landing on the moon that seems, well obviously it's possible because we did it but the part that seems a little bit hard to believe is did we really spend 180,000 years doing absolutely nothing? Well, it's easy to say that if there were, you know, civilizations that came before us where are they now? Which brings me to my next point. Okay, so this is a map of the world showing population by density. As you can see, the very high populations are in general concentrated around the coast. This is not a modern thing. This has been the case throughout all of human history for multiple reasons such as fishing, trade, pleasant sea breeze, and whatnot. This is a map during the ice age. Obviously, since there was so much ice, there was less water in the ocean. So that would mean lower sea levels and more land. You can probably notice that South America is a little bit larger. The Indonesian islands are not a sprawling collection of 17,000 plus islands, but it's more like one or two or maximum three larger islands. Okay, so this next map shows the difference between our world map during the Ice Age and after the Ice Age. So the brown areas are places that used to be land but ended up being covered in water. Based on our current world population and how we are living now, if the sea levels were to rise by about 20 meters, one billion people would find themselves underwater. So what would happen if the sea levels rose 50 meters or 100 meters? Which 100 meters is what did happen at the end of the last ice age. If there did happen to be an ancient advanced civilization before us, Atlantis, Lemuria, Mu, considering the fact that about 10,000 years ago, the world flooded by about 100 meters, is it such a coincidence that the oldest cities we have now are 10,000 years old? Of course at this point the obvious question is, if there's so many things underwater, why haven't we found any? How about the Temple of Cleopatra? It was lost for over a thousand years under 5 meters of water. If something can get lost under 5 meters of water for a thousand years, can you just imagine what kind of things can be lost under 100 meters of water? And let's not forget that anything deeper than 30 meters is already considered deep sea diving. Apparently, we know more about the surface of the moon than we do know about what's under our own oceans. So there could literally be entire cities or even entire continents with entire civilizations under the water that we simply don't know of. So whether the Yonaguni Monument, assuming it's man-made, or the outrageously old Rams Bridge. If these things really are man-made, that completely changes everything that we know about our history. So my point is that human history didn't start 
12,000 years ago, it's very much more likely that it restarted 12,000 years ago. And the answers of our previous civilizations are hidden all around us, just beyond the coast.